Uh, so yes, I will be talking about uh, well, comparing human automatic speech recognition, and I'll be comparing human automatic speech rec recognition at three levels. First, I will be comparing them on the, at the level of the aims, focus, and research approaches within the two research fields. Then I'll be talking about the uh, implementation of the word recognition processes within humans and machines. <laughs> And finally, I'll be talking about, I'll be comparing the uh, uh, word recognition performance of humans and machines. And I'll end the talk with uh, conclusions. So the speech recognition process is, is investigated by two research fields, or actually more, but in this case, we're talking about uh, the field of human speech recognition and the field of automatic speech recognition. And the central issue in both these research fields is arguably the word recognition process. So you might think that there are close collaborations between the two fields, but this is actually not the case. And this is due because within those uh, research fields, there are different aims, there's different research focus, and there are different research approaches. So the aim of uh, the f research field of uh, human speech recognition is to understand how listeners understand or recognize spoken words. Whereas the aim of uh, automatic speech recognition is to build algorithms that are able to recognize words automatically under a variety of uh, conditions and listening conditions with the least possible number of recognition errors. So those two aims are quite different. Moreover, um, both research fields claim to investigate the entire uh, recognition process, so from the acoustic signal unto the recognized words. And uh, an automatic speech recognition system obviously needs to be an end-to-end -end model. Uh, so it has to recognize the words from the acoustic signal. Whereas uh, human speech recognition also claims to investigate the entire recognition process. In what actually happening is that um, re researchers focus on particular aspects of the recognition process. So for instance, they're look looking at the lexical segmentation um, uh, issue or looking at the role of prosody in uh, word recognition. So within automatic speech recognition, algorithms are completely understood uh, mathematically. So we know what they do and um, we, know we can approve them within certain limits. Uh, however, it has so far been um, quite impossible to reach performance levels that are close to uh, human uh, word recognition performance. Within the field of human speech recognition, because people are looking at particular parts of the speech recognition process, there is actually no grand unifying theory of how human, uh, humans uh, recognize speech. And also many parts of the theories remain unspecified. There are a couple of uh, computation models that, are now, that you can call end-to-end -end models, but even these models only uh, focus on specific parts of the recognition process and do not um, uh, cover everything. So these different aims and different research approaches obviously also uh, result in different uh, research approaches. Um, within the, uh, the field of human speech re uh, recognition, um, information or, or knowledge is, is extracted by um, carrying out behavioral studies, by uh, using brain studies, or building computation models, which are um, computer implementations of parts of the recognition process. And these behavioral studies, uh, or the brain studies, they um, have human listeners in a booth or in um, an fMRI machine, and they have to do uh, certain speech-related tasks, such as, such as auditory lexical decision, uh, where they have to say yes or no to certain uh, stimulus, or they have to categorize uh, a phoneme, is it a B or a D. And all these different um, uh, research methodologies give different uh, data, so re reaction times, or eye movements or brain waves. And these measurements together, or individually, le uh, lead to uh, build the building of theories of parts of the human speech uh, recognition process. In automatic speech recognition, uh, because the goal is to uh, recognize speech as well as possible with the least possible number of errors, um, the research approach is quite different. 
So focus there has mostly been on uh, improving signal representations, so how to get all the relevant information from the speech stream uh, that, can, that, sub, sub, um, that can be used to uh, recognize the speech from. Um, improving search methods, uh, so improving um, the matching of the input with the search space of acoustic models, lexical models, and uh, language models. Improve uh, robustness in adverse listening condition, conditions, so, such as uh, noisy environments, and by improving the language model. So, despite there being uh, a central issue of word recognition, there are actually quite a lot of differences between the research fields. Uh, nevertheless, the word recognition processes that humans and machines have to carry out, they have to be the same in at least a very high level respect because we'll have the acoustic signal to start from and have to recognize words at the end. So I now move on to uh, comparing these uh, word recognition processes in humans and machines um, by focusing on a couple of uh, key um, features, key components uh, that uh, humans and machines have to carry out when they recognize words. So first, sorry. there's the invariance problem. So when we, when we speak, two uh, utterances or two words or even two um, segments are never the same. So the speech signal is actually highly variable. And this highly variable acoustic signal needs to be mapped onto discrete uh, representations. They have to be mapped onto words, meanings, phrases. So how do we do that? Well, there are two extreme solutions, and these two extreme solutions can be found both within, within the field of automatic speech recognition and in the field of uh, human uh, speech recognition. Uh, the first uh, is the episodic uh, theory of lexical organization. This theory uh, says that for each lexical item, or for each item or phrase, there are multiple stored acoustic representations in the brain. And um, the mapping is then from uh, the input to these acoustic uh, representations and the best matching acoustic representation that word is then recognized. Um, as I said, this is found in both uh, human speech recognition, but there are also now implementations of this theory in uh, the field of automatic speech recognition. Uh, for instance, uh, the group of uh, Christa Munch has uh, done this in Belgium. The other extreme solution is the use of abstract representations. Um, so within uh, human speech recognition, there's a theory that the acoustic signal is mapped onto some kind of pre lexical representation, often mm -hmm. assumed to be phonemes, because, well, that it makes life uh, a lot easier. Um, and um, the acoustic signal then um, activates these pre lexical representations, but uh, well, what they actually are, no one uh, knows. <laughs> Uh, and these pre-lexical representations then in turn uh, activate the lexical uh, representations. Um, and this is, in uh, automatic speech recognition, uh, you see a similar um, um, a scheme where you have, for instance, the HMM-based uh, models, which, are, which tend to be either uh, based on phonemes or on triphones or on uh, word models. So you have uh, an, an abstract representation of a certain unit where, uh, which is used to eventually recognize uh, the words. So it's an intermediate stage of between the acoustic signal and uh, the recognized words. So when we recognize speech, especially for humans, it's necessary that we recognize speech all close to real time. Because if we would not do so, communication would just break down. And uh, so th that therefore, it is assumed that when we listen to speech, there's a continuous flow of information from the pre-lexical level to the lexical level, or from the acoustic level to uh, the word level, depending on the, the theory uh, that you um, adhere to. But it's not, not the case that certain parts of the speech signal are first processed, and then chunks of this processed information is moved up to uh, a, a next level. It is, that's not the case. It's the case is that the information spreads uh, through uh, continuously over time to the higher levels. Well, real-time real processing is actually not that important in most um, ASR applications. There are a few where it's becoming more important now, but especially with the, when you're looking at large vocabulary recognition uh, tasks, it's not really important. Uh, however, this um, continuous flow of information, you, you, you do find that uh, uh, in the, the way the search is normally built up in automatic speech recognition systems. So there is a gradual, continuous matching of the acoustic uh, signal and the acoustic models. So again, there is um, a similarity between what humans are doing and what machines are doing. 
Well, at the heart of uh, word recognition, of speech recognition, is the multiple activation evaluation of words. And this process can actually be split up into three different uh, processes. First, the input needs to be compared to the word uh, representations in your lexicon or in your, uh, in your brain. And this is uh, accomplished through a search through uh, your lexicon, where all the words that partially match the input are being activated. So not just the one that is being recognized, but all words that partially match the, uh, the input. Next, the degree to which this input matches the, um, uh, the word representations needs to be assessed. So that needs to be determined how well, or how good this match actually is. And this is done in parallel for all the different words that, are, that match the input. And eventually, the best matching word or path needs to be um, chosen. And I'll go back and get back to that in the next slide. Um, so within human speech recognition, depending on the theory uh, that uh, you adhere to, these subcomponents sometimes correspond to separate parts, whereas with, within uh, automatic speech recognition, normally these three components are combined into a single search process. But nevertheless, these three steps need to be carried out. So if you have, would make a picture of uh, the uh, recognition process in an automatic speech recognition system and in a human speech recognition system, this is what you could come up with. So what you see on the left is um, a typical graph that many automatic speech recognition systems will give you. So you have a begin node on the left, you have an end node, the E, on the right, and the arrows indicate the path through the search space um, that, uh, so basically your end, that, that could be an end best list. So all the words that partially match the input will um, uh, appear at some point in the path, and the best path will eventually be recognized. So that's also the main difference between um, automatic and human speech recognition, is that most automatic speech recognition systems, they calculate the best possible path instead of the best possible word. On the right, you see uh, the, the competition process in uh, human speech recognition. So what you here see is that words that, are, uh, that overlap with the, the same part of the input, they are in competition with one another. And that's denoted with the, those vertical lines with the little dots on it. And the word that best matches the uh, acoustic signal will uh, provide the most inhibition to the other words that partially match the input. And what you see here is that there is no path through this search base. So it's individual words that are activated and are suppressed. And um, eventually, when you're talking about continuous speech recognition, which, with, which um, automatic and humans uh, um, have to do, automatic systems and humans have to do, is that within, within an ASR system, this continuous speech recognition is automatically well, done because of the way uh, the ASR system works, because it calculates paths. Within humans, um, it is done because uh, the words that, best over, that have the best match with the speech signal suppress the others, and that this is done such that there's as little um, left over of the speech signal that does not match onto a word. So both uh, ASR systems and humans are doing uh, continuous speech recognition, but there are differences. Then it has been found that humans uh, use uh, possible word boundary cues when they want to segment the speech into, into words. They could use uh, things like rhythmic structure, phonotactic constraints, acoustic and allophonic, uh, allophonic uh, cues, silent pauses, etc. However, uh, this is not what uh, ASR systems tend to use. Um, there have been people trying to do this, but so far not very uh, successfully. So, Despite the differences in the two research fields, you, you again see that when you actually look at the processes that humans and machines have to carry out, there are quite some similarities between the two. And also the, the ways of, the, um, uh, so the, the, there are quite some parallels as well. The, the, the solutions that have been used and adopted within ASR seem to, well, they um, seem to mimic in a way, or at least are similar to what humans are doing. But how well, do they actually compare? Well, it's normally assumed that uh, humans are far, far better than um, uh, machines at recognizing speech. Um, and this is normally done by, um, in, by comparing humans and machines on the same task, so, uh, what, what I've called here comparative studies. Uh, so these can be done, can be used to investigate the size of the performance gap. 
But they can also be used to investigate the question why it is that humans are actually so much better than machines in recognizing speech. And they can be used to learn what it is about human speech recognition, what parts about, um, uh, that are important in human speech recognition that will then help improve automatic speech recognition performance. So these comparative studies are actually quite useful, um, I would argue. However, very few exist. Now, there are several reasons for this. Um, an important reason, I think, is that, well, basically the, diff the differences in goals between the two research fields. And uh, these different goals lead to different tasks that the ESR systems and the humans have to carry out, which in turn leads to different measures. Um, so ESR systems, because they have to, they are evaluated in terms of a word error rate, um, it's just percentages correct or incorrect that, that is uh, being measured. On the other hand, human listeners uh, tend to be in booths, they, and their reaction times are being measured, their brain waves or their eye movements or uh, decision, um, decisions um, uh, correct or incorrect as well. But the question then is, so okay, on what level are we actually going to compare humans and machines? Because reaction time is not that important for ASR systems, whereas for uh, uh, the field of human speech recognition, accuracies or word recognition responses are not that interesting uh, normally. Also, another uh, big issue is the difference in data sets that are, that are being used with it between the two research fields. So ASR systems tend to be tested on large dedicated corpora, for instance, for uh, dedicated to a specific task or dedicated to a specific um, speech style. Whereas in the field of human speech recognition, the uh, stimuli uh, tend to be small sets, very delicate, dedicated to this particular task. So it's difficult to find uh, ways of comparing um, uh, humans and uh, human and machine performance. But luckily, that this has been done. Uh, in a seminal paper from 1997, uh, Lipman. Uh, compared human and machine word recognition performance on a range of different tasks from um, very easy, so connected digits, to large vocabulary, conversational speech and switchboard in acquired and different um, adverse listening conditions. And what he basically concluded was that humans are a magnitude, uh, in order of magnitude better at recognizing words than machines are. And that's also what you see here on the, um, on the left side of the picture. Um, it's a logarithmic scale. So these differences between humans and machines are actually much, much larger than what's depicted here. But that was 97. So that's 16 years ago. And ASR systems have improved since then. Uh, so I looked uh, at um, on the, whether I could find a new uh, comparison. And I found the paper by uh, Yunuya, I don't know how to pronounce uh, the name uh, from 2012. But what you again see here is that so uh, what he did was he compared um, humans and machines in four different listening conditions from quiet to zero dB and four different uh, vocabulary sizes from 1000 to 8000. And I combined, uh, so I averaged the scores for the humans and the machines for over the four vocabulary sizes and I plotted here quiet and, um, and a zero dB as an R. What you again see here is that machines are much, much worse than humans are. So this performance gap still exists between humans and machines. So when you look into a bit more detail um, at the errors that humans and machines make, so this is my only slide about errors, actually, <laughs> uh, you see that the type of errors that they make is quite similar, so, which means that the difficulties that humans and machines experience are actually quite similar. But ASR systems just make many more errors. And the type of errors that they, machines and humans make are mostly content words. They find content words more difficult than function words. Uh, and humans make fewer inflection errors. So that's, again, where the ASR system just makes more inflection errors. And this performance gap between humans and machines actually increases uh, when the listening conditions become more and more adverse. So what causes this performance gap? I really have to speed up now because I'm running out of time. Uh, my apologies. Um, well, first of all, there's differences in training material. Uh, ASR systems are being trained on hours and hours and hours and hours of speech, but humans are exposed to far, far more uh, material and f far more diverse material, material uh, throughout their lifetimes. Uh, and just simply adding more or better training material is not going to uh, cover the gap between human and machine uh, listening performance. But another important issue is higher level information. So when we listen to speech, 
Um, we can use information from the environment, from well, our world knowledge, a topic of discourse, etc. We all incorporate that to recognize the words. Whereas machines, they can only use uh, the, the language models that they have, which usually consist of uh, word frequencies and word co-occurrence uh, co statistics. So there's far less uh, information in there. Well, to make a fairer comparison between humans and machines, there have been uh, attempts to, um, that, that has been attempted, and there have been corpora developed specifically aimed at this task. So for instance, all the book, look at some uh, speech corpus that Bert might be talking about in, in his next talk. I think, yeah, okay, good. Uh, it's it's a, um, uh, a speech corpus which contains of CVC and VCV um, uh, Lockett's homes. There is no semantic information and um, they compare humans and machines on recognizing the consonants in those CVC, VCVs and what you see is that humans are much, much better than ASR systems. Uh, Martin and I, and I did a similar thing uh, at the Interspeech 2008 Concert Challenge Corpus, uh, which was um, presented at the uh, Brisbane Conference of Interspeech. And again, what we find was that humans outperform ASR systems by far, and especially for plosives. However, what is also, this more detailed analysis also revealed was that not all phonemes or segments are equally difficult to recognize for, for uh, machines. So, for instance, nasals and fricatives are done fairly well by machines. Um, um, especially compared to plosives. So even, but even when higher level information is removed, humans then still outperform machines by far. Then there is a final point of accused to cues and features. So when we listen to a speech signal, we normally have the entire speech signal that we can uh, rely on and that, that we can extract information from. However, a machine can only use the information that's embedded in the acoustic uh, features, uh, such as the MFCCs and PLPs. And all the information that's not in extracted, is not in these MFCCs and PLPs, cannot be used by the machine. And for instance, one thing that's normally not, not included is phase information. Whereas it has been found that phase information is actually quite important for humans to, um, to recognize speech, and especially with intelligibility. So uh, it's not just the fact that humans have the entire speech signal available to them. It's also the way we use that information in the speech signal that differs from what machines do. So uh, when you look at more detailed analysis again, then what you find is that ASR systems have a far worse at, at using voicing information than humans are. Whereas on uh, plates of circulation is about equally well used. And uh, plosives and non-sibilant fricatives are actually better, better recognized by ASRs than humans. So, if you want to uh, improve ASR systems, you, well, if you, first of all, you can improve the feature extraction, but then just focus on those parts, or fo focus on those cues that actually can be improved. Uh, and this, can, well, which ones those are can be established through um, human machine uh, recognition comparisons. Um, another point is, well, the one that's actually on top, is to add contextual information, for instance, through priming. Uh, so when, when we listen, there, if, you, if you hear a word, another word that's similar to it might actually be activated. We might be able to do something like that for ASR system as well. And something that I haven't talked to, about too much is improve robustness against adverse listening conditions. But note that this is also within um, psycholinguistic research, a fairly new uh, research field. And not that much is known about how we uh, as listeners deal with uh, uh, how are we actually able to recognize speech in adverse listening conditions? But again, this can be investigated through uh, these dedicated comparisons between humans and machines. So to sum up this slide, because I'm running out of time, oh, you can read that. Thank you for your attention.